how do we relate the amount of condensate to latent heat? The amount of heat, so we are going to write a, a simple heat balance. So, if this is my wall, that is the film. So, if I take a small location here, okay. So, the amount of fluid which is present here depends upon the amount of heat that is actually transported from the vapor to the wall, right. So, dq that is the rate at which the heat is transported from the vapor to the wall that should be equal to some flux of heat transport, okay, multiplied by B into dx, B is the length of the plate outside the load and that should be equal to the latent heat multiplied by that is the rate of condensation, differential rate of condensation multiplied by the latent heat of vaporization. So, that tells me gives me a relationship between the flux and the amount of uh, fluid that is condensing. Right? So, from here I can find out dm dot by dx is given by qs into b divided by hf. Okay. What is qs dub, qs pra double prime? How do we find that? Well, it is really not a chicken egg problem. How do we find qs double prime? Okay. So, remember that we said that the u and v are negligible. Right. So, which means that the convection effects are ignored. So, if convection effects are ignored, what is the primary mode of heat transport? Is only conduction. What is the flux for a 1D system? It is K into so QS double prime. So, remember that now it is a, a 1D conduction problem. Okay. So, it is a fixed to temperature. The temperature of one end of this 1D problem is Ts, the other end is Tsat. Okay. So, Qs is simply given by A liquid that is the conductivity of the liquid divided by delta divided by the thickness of the 1D slab right multiplied by Tsat minus Ts. So, that is the flux of heat transport. Okay is from your conduction that we did at the start of this course. Okay. So, now if you plug that in, so you have 1 by B dm dot by dx that should be equal to Al by delta 1 by Hfg into Tsat minus Ts. Okay. So, now by writing heat balance and taking into account that it is a 1D conduction problem. So, we have found a relationship between the condensate rate. Okay. So, m dot by b is the amount of condensate per unit length of that of the wall which is actually going outside this bolt. Right. So, this is nothing but d gamma x by dx that is 1 by b. But we know the expression for the amount of condensate per unit length. So, if I substitute that here, so that will be, so that will be rho L G rho L minus rho V divided by 3 times mu L into 3 delta square d delta by dx. Okay. So, all I have done is I have differentiated the expression for the amount of condensate that we estimated using momentum balance. Remember short while ago we estimated the amount of condensate from the momentum balance. I take the first differential and that is this expression. Okay. So, from here, so now I have got an expression for d delta by dx okay. and so that is given by 3 mu L mu L into K L divided by delta Fg T sat minus T s divided by rho L g rho v minus rho l. Okay. 
basically rho L. So L minus rho. Okay. So so now we've got an expression for the bound layer thickness. So we can integrate this expression, and we will find the bound layer thickness. and that will turn out to be 4 times k l mu l divided by uh, did I make a mistake oh 3 delta square 1 over delta square okay, thanks yeah I cancelled out this 3 thanks so that will be g times rho l rho l minus rho v h f g t sat minus t s multiplied by x to the power of 1 by 4 okay. So, that is the expression for the bound layer thickness. So, we have a question why are we so concerned about bound layer thickness for this problem? We never worried about boundary layer thickness for any of the problems we looked at, right? Why are we so concerned? Why is it important for this problem? Okay, but how do we find heat transport coefficient? Remember, the objective is to find heat transport coefficient. How do we find heat transport coefficient? We know the boundary layer thickness now. What is the heat transport coefficient? It is there on the board. It is scale over delta, right? What is the definition of heat transport coefficient from Newton's law of cooling? We say that the net amount of heat, the flux of heat that is transported is the heat transport coefficient at that location multiplied by the temperature difference. So, that is the definition right and so from because it is a 1D conduction problem, the flux is given by K L by delta into T sat minus T S. So, you could actually read out from here that the heat transport coefficient is nothing but K L by delta. So, that is why we have been so concerned about finding the boundary layer thickness. Okay. So, if we know the boundary layer thickness we are done we have found the heat transport coefficient for this problem okay. So, we know the boundary layer thickness. So, the expression for heat transport coefficient is given by K L into G rho L rho S rho liquid rho V divided by 4 k l mu l t sat minus t s into x to the power of 1 by 4 ok. So, this uh, this expression and some of the other expressions we are going to see today is because of this very well known person called John Leonhard. He has made significant contributions to heat transport problem. In fact, he has a book to his name. So, now we said that there are two objectives one is the local heat transport coefficient, and the second one is the average heat transport coefficient. Okay. So, suppose if the length of the plate is L, so you want to find the average heat transport coefficient. By now it is almost a trivial exercise, so you know what the formula is, plug in the heat transport coefficient and you can find the average. Okay. So, the average turns out to be turns out to be 4 by 3 h of x and so now I can define Nusselt number h of l thanks h of l ok. So, now I can define Nusselt number based on the length of the plate the average Nusselt number which is divided by K liquid so, and that is given by 0.943 into rho L V rho L minus rho V 
multiplied by into L cube divided by mu L K L T sat minus T S and the whole thing to the power of 1 by 4. So, that is what is the average Nusselt number. So, now we are done with the flat plate case. So, we can also look at the cylinders. I am not going to go into the details of this cylinders other than to just present what the expression for Nusselt number is. So, the cylinders is something that is also very very commonly encountered. So, suppose I take a cylinder here ok. Now, I have a fluid vapor which is actually flowing past this this cylinder and now I am going to have a condensate which is going to form. So, let us say it is flowing from top to bottom ok. So, I am going to have a condensate and the condensate is going to flow at the bottom side of the cylinder. So, very common application is if you look at a heat exchanger, we will see shell and tube heat exchanger when we discuss heat exchanger problems. So, in a shell and tube heat exchanger, the way it looks like is you have a shell ok and then you have a tube which is going through it. So, this is just called as a single pass, we will worry about all that when we discuss heat exchangers. So, one of the common applications is where there is a steam which goes on the shell side ok. So, you want to heat some fluid which is going on the tube side. For example, there may be a reactor which is connected to the bottom uh, exit of the tube side. You want to heat the fluid before it gets into the reactor. So, the fluid goes through the tube and you might have steam at the saturation temperature. So, what you will encounter is there will be condensate which will be formed along the curved surface of the tube. So, that is the place where the condensation process at the exterior of the cylinder or the curved surface of the cylinder plays an important role. So, these kinds of correlations are actually very commonly used in the heat exchanger setting. So, the correlation for that is for outer cylinder. And if it is a horizontal tube, so the heat transport average heat transport coefficient based on the diameter of the tube that is given by 0.729 multiplied by well. Rho v f g prime cube divided by that is that is the k liquid cube of that mu t sat minus t s into d to the power of 1 by 2 ok. So, that is the average heat transport coefficient based on the diameter of the tube. An extension of that is suppose if I have n tubes together okay. suppose if I have cascade of these tubes. So, remember that in the shell and tube heat exchanger we saw that when steam comes through the shell side ok you will have condensation on the first tube, you will also have condensation on the second tube. So, it is important to know what is the rate of condensation and the heat transport coefficient when you have many tubes which are placed in a certain line. So, if I have n tubes, so you have tubes placed one below the other 1 to n. So, if you have n tubes like that and so in that case the heat transport coefficient can be extended to 0.729 multiplied by g times rho l rho v rho l minus rho v multiplied by the latent heat a liquid divided by mu into t sat minus t s ok. 
so it is just multiplied by n ok. So, it turns out that that is the appropriate heat transport average heat transport coefficient for tubes which are actually n tubes which is placed one below the other. So, when we started this discussion we said that u and v are very small right. So, what will be the nature of the flow if u and v are very small? Small velocities come on if the velocity is small what is the nature of the flow is laminar right. So, what we looked at is laminar condition. So, one could also have turbulent conditions for the same problem and so the Reynolds number to so remember that the flow is only in the boundary layer. So, the Reynolds number in the boundary layer is given by 4 m dot by mu L into B and so if this is less than 30 then it is considered to be laminar the flow is considered to be laminar and if this is about is greater than 1800 considered to be a, a turbulent flow considered to be a, a turbulent condition and obviously you cannot neglect cannot ignore convection effects cannot ignore convection and so the heat transport coefficient for this case is given by this expression that is equal to divided by 1.08 minus 5.2. So, that is the correlation for heat transport coefficient under turbulent conditions. ok. Yeah, V is the velocity of the liquid to be U s the x component velocity. So, we will not go more into condensation. So, for the course purposes we will stop condensation at this point. So, from the next lecture which we will start heat exchangers we look at what are the different types of heat exchangers, we look at how to characterize heat exchangers, what are the design parameters and what is definition of shell tube heat exchangers all that we will see in the next 